Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll see how to create the Game of Thrones in Excel using VVA macros. So it consists of two vehicles that leave a track behind as you see and the goal of the game is to make the other player crash before you do and you can crash against the other player or against your own track behind or if you hit the edges of the board. So I'm playing here with the blue color against the computer. So let's start from a new workbook and we're going to need to format the worksheet with very small cells. So let's have one for the column and eight for the row. And our range is going to be from B2 to B40. Let's move to the Visual Basic Editor now. And the first macro will be start game and here we're going to set the starting position for player one and player two let's say row one for player one is going to be 20 and the column for player one is going to be 60 and player two is going to be 20 something like that Player 1 is going to have um, the blue color, so interior color is blue, and player 2 is going to have the red color. Now, to move the throne, we're going to use the keys in the keyboard, so we need to call here another macro called bind keys. And I'm going to have that in a separate module. So I'm going to call this module the main module. And then I'm going to add another module and I'll call it keys. And here we will have the sub bind keys. And we've already seen how to do that in a previous video where we were creating the snake game. And we were moving the snake also with the keys, so with the arrows in the keyboard. And we're going to do exactly the same. So I will go a bit quicker now. So that's going to be using the on key method of the application object. And we're going to have the left, which is going to call the move left macro when, when we click the, the left arrow. And the same for the other direction. So that's going to be right. And it's going to call move right. Up. And down. Now here below we're going to have the macros move left. It's going to set a variable and, and we're going to call it inc for increment of the column, or let's say better, column increment, it's going to be minus 1 to move to the left. And you're going to see how we use that in a moment. That's exactly the same we were using in the snake game. So, And then we will say the row increment is going to be 0. So if it was moving in the vertical direction, that's going to be 0. And it's going to turn to the, to the left. But we need to check that it's not moving to the right when we want to turn to the left that's not allowed so that will only happen if call ink is different than one and we're going to do the same for all the other directions so move right in this case if it's not moving to the left it's going to change the column increment to 1 and then move up here we're going to check the row increment if it's not going down it can then we set this one to 0 and it can go up with minus 1 and move down is actually let me copy this one is the other way around if it's not moving up 
it's going to be moving down. The last thing we want to do here is to unbind the keys so that when we finish the game, we can use the keys again as usual. So that's setting the on key method to nothing. Okay, let's go back to the main module and we want to use those variables, the increment, the column increment and the row increment vari variables, we want to use them in this module. So they need to be declared as public. So public column increment as an integer and row increment as an integer. Okay, so whenever we press the key, the arrows and the value changes, it will be available here in this module and we will be able to use and to move the, the, the throne in that direction. So now after binding the keys, we're gonna start we're gonna start the move macro, the moving macro and, and let's call it move player one. So that's here down move player one. And before we do all that, let, let me comment these two lines and run this start macro, which is going to run actually from a button here. So I'm going to add a button to start the game. And this is going to call a start game. And let me go back here because I didn't change the name of this macro. That would be free keys. So the first one is bind keys. Then when, when the game's over, we will free the keys. Now let's go back. And if we start, we see we have already the starting positions for each of the two players. So let's go back to the main module. And now in the moving macro for player one, the first thing we're gonna check is if the column increment, and this is the column increment for player one. I didn't write column increment one, but when we program the things for player two, we will have to use other variables. So we could use, for example, column increment two. If that's different than zero or the row increment is different than zero, then we're gonna start checking. So, so when we start the game, both are zero actually, until we press any of the keys. And we may want to say here, column increment equals zero, row increment equals zero. Now, when we press a key and we start moving in any direction, we're gonna check the following. So we're gonna check if the column one is greater than two, because the first column in the board is column B, which is column two. So if it's greater than two, we are good. And if column one is below column B set, I don't know what number is that, but we could also say range B set one dot column. And, or we could, we could replace that with a number. I mean, just go back to the worksheet and find out which number is that. And the row one is greater than two as well because that's the, the top row in this board. And row one is below 40, which is the last row here, down here. Then, then we can move the tron. So that would be cells r1 comma c1 dot interior dot color equals blue because we are moving player one which is the blue color and here we end this if statement and we're gonna end the other if statement so that's very simple we still need to check a lot of things but let's but let's keep it like that for now now to move the throne we need a timer event to call repeatedly this macro and that's something we've used in previous videos so we've seen how to use that in the video to move shapes in a worksheet in excel and we've used the same one also in the snake game so i'm just gonna copy paste that code that i have here and it's exactly the same we've used before and i'm gonna paste that in a separate module and I'll call it timer. 
And I will not go through the code because I have explained that in a previous video. If you want to know more about, if you want to know in detail how this code works, please check this other video. I'm going to leave the link up here. And that's the video about moving shapes in, in a worksheet in Excel. But basically, this is using the setTimer function. Uh, and here's the declaration for uh, Excel 64 or 32-bit. And when we call the start timer macro here, it's going to use a set timer function to call another macro, in this case, timer event, every certain time interval, which is defined by the speed. And, and we can set this to 200 milliseconds, for example, but you can change that. And this is going to call timer event down here, which is actually going to call um, our move macro. And instead of move snake, because I copied that from the previous um, game, I'm going to call it move player one, which is the macro we've been writing before. And finally, we have the stop timer. When we finish the game or when, when the game is over, we will be calling stop timer to kill the set timer function. So if we go back now to the main module, this is going to be calling move player one every 200 milliseconds until we crash or we press the stop button. So I'm going to add a stop button for now while testing and assign the stop timer function. And when we start the game, what we're going to do is we're going to bind the keys. Yes. And actually, we're not going to call move player one. We're going to call a start timer. Because a start timer over here in the timer module, a start timer is going to call timer event, which is going to call the move player one. So it's going to call this macro here. And then it's going to keep calling this macro every 200 milliseconds. And that will create the move of the, of the Tron vehicle in the worksheet. So another thing we want to do in the start macro is to clear the content in the board. And the, the, the board is actually all black. So what we need to do is to say the range B2 up to B set 40, interior color is going to be black. Now, let me save what I've done until now. And the other thing we want to do is to declare the row and column variables. But we need to do that at the module level. So we will do that up here, R1 as an integer, C1 as an integer, and also the variables for player 2, R2, C2. And before we start testing the game, we have to add something very important that I've missed here, and that is to increment the row and the column variables of the Tron vehicle by the column increment. So that would be C1 equals whatever C1 is plus the column increment, and R1 is R1 plus the row increment. Then every time we call this macro, it will update the position of the throne, adding the blue color to a new, a new position here, determined by the row on the column index. So let's play now and see, as soon as I hit the arrow, in this case to the left, then it's moving to the left, now to up, left, up, and, and so on, right? So now we still didn't program anything about um, hitting any other objects. So for, for, as of now, we can actually cross uh, anywhere. The only thing we can't do is to hit the edge. So when it hits the edge, it finishes, but, but we didn't add the stop timer. So the timer is still working. So I'm going to click stop here. And um, when that happens, we have to add here an else statement. So when this condition is not met and it hits the border, 
we are going to call the stop timer function and for example we can display a message saying game over So let's play again and now if I hit the the edge, uh, let's say up there, it's gonna stop the timer and say game over. Okay. Now the other thing we want to check and we need to add here to this macro is if it hits the other player or if it hits itself. So and we're gonna check that by the interior color. So the if the interior color is red or blue or what is the same if it's not black so let's add it here to this condition and cells r1 plus the row increment comma c1 plus the column increment interior color is black then we are good to go we are good to move forward but otherwise, if it's red or blue, it's going to be else and, in, and it's going to end the game. So let's see how that works now. If I move um, towards the other player at some point, we're going to hit or we can hit um, the track we leave behind. So it's game over. <laughs> 